we are making a webcomic today and I'm going to show you every single step from the very beginning so you can make one too. There are many ways to make comics with lots of overlap and I'm going to teach you the secret to how I create mine. My webcomic is formatted for Webtoon, which means the layout is designed for vertical scrolling and is compatible with other vertical scroll sites like Tapas, and I post my comic to both. Choosing format is an important step, but it's not the first step, so let's really get started from the beginning. The first thing every comic needs is a story. It can be your story, or if you just want to make art and draw, you can partner with a writer and illustrate their story. Either way, I think it's important to focus on a story in a genre that you enjoy. Between 2020 and 2022, I heard a lot of creators say they began a romance comic just because it was the most popular genre on Webtoon at that time. For creators who enjoy the romance genre, that is great. Yay! For anyone who doesn't and is forcing themselves to work on one anyway, it can and often did lead to burnout or struggling to draw each new chapter because they didn't care for the story that they were telling. There are pros and cons to contributing to a popular genre. Pros being there's a huge audience for it. And con, there's also a lot of competition that your comic is up against. So I think the best thing to do is work on a comic in a genre that you like and enjoy so that when it starts to feel like work, and it will, your passion for the story and satisfaction in the outcome will be there to help keep you motivated. In this video, we are going to use my webcomic Venerable as our example. Venerable is a heartwarming, feel-good fantasy adventure that is low-key about challenging ageism. The hero is an elderly woman named Marty, her nurse Dottie is her skeptical sidekick, and they are navigating a strange but exciting new world tasked with saving the cursed kingdom. Whichever genre you decide to work on, your story needs a few things. One of the most useful tools when it comes to writing your story is your logline. Writing a logline is quick and easy and boils down the elements of your story into a clear and simple summary that will do wonders to keep you focused and on track. Whether your technique for writing your story is a minimalistic skeletal outline, written as a script, or full-blown narrative story pages, it's easy to get sidetracked and lost in the weeds, or accidentally rerouted to an alternative objective entirely when we do not have a firm grip on our logline. So then how do we write a logline? Screencraft has kindly shared this advice, and I'm going to share it with you. First and foremost, share the core concept, not the story. What this means is clearly lay out the narrative, but not your ending, not in your logline at least. Start with a general logline structure, which is up on screen. Avoid character names, for example, saying Marty does, etc. tells us nothing about who the main character is. Search for irony in your concepts. Write multiple options with different phrasing and write the logline before you write your script. For example, starting with the general logline structure will get me this. An elderly woman goes to a magic kingdom to prevent a terrible prophecy, despite being told she's too old to take on tough challenges. Which is a good start, but if I make a few adjustments, we also get an elderly woman discarded in a nursing home must overcome criticism about her age and childish beliefs in order to save a magic kingdom from a terrible prophecy. In that one, we're borrowing from this logline formula on screen now, which excludes the identifiable antagonist in my case, since she's combating ageism at large and not an individual person or entity, but it still works. Once you have your logline, it's up to you how flexible or detailed you'd like your story outline to be. Whether it's a script, narrative composition, or skeletal slash bullet outline, make sure to include these things, the premise, backstory, inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution, and denouncement. And if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, let me just say it's essentially tying up loose ends. Plus, include any themes that are important to your story or message. And in my case, that would be anti-ageism, for example. Identifying each of those things in your outline will help you flush out your story, especially if you're using the standard three-act structure. 
since we're covering all the steps I use for my comic, let's take a moment to review how I wrote my story outline. And you can use this method too, although you don't have to if it's not your first choice. I started by writing out that list of items my story needed. And then based on my logline, I began filling it in, kind of like a questionnaire. This is the perfect time for brainstorming and puzzling together what should come before or after other plot points or story beats in your comic. In fact, I went online and found some questionnaires for building a story and filled those out, printed them, and now they live inside my webtoon binder for quick reference. Doing this really helped me explore who my characters were, what should exist in my setting or world building, and other things similar to that. Once I finished my list of those necessary story components, I then decided to write a story treatment, a 5-10 to 10 page summary, rather than a full-blown script. This gives me more than a bullet outline without having to actually script a full-length screenplay or draft a complete manuscript. Treatments are often written in a narrative-like prose and have the following features. I also find it really useful to print this out as well, so I have a copy of my story treatment in my webtoon binder, and it keeps everything nice, organized, accessible where I need it, and easy to reference. The next step is one of the more exciting steps for some people and one of the more daunting tasks for others, and that's creating your title. Some creators already know what they want the title to be even before they've named their main character, and sometimes it's hard to come up with a title until you get to know your story a little better. Other times, the title you had in mind at the beginning no longer fits your story once you've finished fleshing it out. A title should encapsulate the essence of your story, and if you're unsure what to call your comic, here are some helpful tips from masterclass.com to get you started. Some titles use the characters such as The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Some will use the setting. Example would be Manchester by the Sea, while others use the premise. For example, Get Out. Titles can also be metaphorical, such as Silence of the Lambs. Regardless of the focus of your title, try to make it as original as possible so that it doesn't sound too close to an already existing title. For my webtoon, I use the main character as my title focus, which is why it is called Venerable a word with positive connotations, which means respected based on great age or impressive dignity, worthy of veneration or reverence, to be admired and respected because of status or age. While I am not saying you deserve respect just for being old, I do believe that you deserve to be seen and treated as a human being with plenty of potential regardless of your age. If that sounds like an interesting story to you that you're interested in reading, there is a link in the description that will take you straight to my webcomic, so please, after you finish watching this, check it out. Once you've written your story the way that works best for you, it is time, finally, to make some art. Here is a list of best practices for drawing your comic. Pick a medium that you are comfortable with, pick a style that you can comfortably replicate, Consider how long it takes to draw a panel in that style and how many panels you expect to draw per chapter. Then decide if you're willing to devote that much time in between each comic update. Write down how working on your comic fits into your schedule with everything else. Look for ways to simplify or streamline your process. And remember, it's okay to settle for an art style that works with the time you have available and what you can create consistently without becoming overwhelmed. And lastly, consider if there is anyone you trust who is interested in helping you do this project. With those things in mind, now it is time to start drawing reference sheets. I think this is the part most people look forward to. We love designing characters and creating reference sheets for your main cast can be very satisfying. It's also a great time to practice drawing them more than once, test out your consistency, the character readability, i.e. see if the design is too busy or easy to understand at a glance, experiment and figure out your color palettes. When making your reference sheets, my advice is to do a full body turnaround and a few headshots demonstrating a couple of different facial expressions. This is also a great time to figure out what format you want to produce your comic in. Yes, it is time for that decision in this process. Deciding if you're illustrating pages for print, pages for web, comic strips, or vertical scroll chapters for mobile apps such as I have will impact the format you will need to use. That includes both the size ratio and the quality DPI of the file template. 
I'm going to assume most people watching this are formatting for Webtoon, but a lot of what I'm about to tell you still applies even if you're using a different format for your comic. All of this leads to making pages or chapters if you're doing a vertical scroll comic. Everything up till now was part of the planning process. Here is where the audience facing work begins. This is an exciting step because what you do now will be seen by your readers and there is something actualizing about sharing your work with others. It can feel more tangible and real to have others acknowledge what you created. That said, all of the work you already did still counts and we'll be using every bit of your planning to make this part go more smoothly. For example, in the design phase, we went over how much you can reasonably draw per chapter and how long that comfortably takes you. With that information, you can now create your comic consistently. If you're looking at a blank page right now and wondering, yeah, but how do I turn all this planning into panels? Please don't panic. I've got some tips to help with that. When we talked about writing your story, we made sure to include important story beats, right? Well, for each chapter of your comic, finding the start and stop points is easier when you look for mini story beats, so to speak. And here is a checklist I use when going through my story looking for the in and out points per chapter, and you can use it too. Sometimes I find all these story beats in one scene, and other times we transition scenes, like in a movie, to complete the chapter arc. But using this checklist to find the start and end points for each chapter helps to give your readers something substantial each chapter, and leave them feeling like they gained something and it wasn't just filler or fluff. Using this also helps you as the creator avoid accidentally wasting time and energy on filler or fluff chapters that aren't serving your story. I recently drafted an example chapter using this process on a live stream and have edited that footage down so I can share it here as well. So let's take a quick look. You have the premise, which is the current situation. You start where you stopped, unless you're doing some kind of a time skip, which you, if you are, you need to establish that is a time skip. If that's just something as simple as saying five years later or 10 years ago, whatever, that's fine. We're gonna follow the structure and then we're gonna write it here. So we have our current situation which is everyone outside. And what I'm gonna have happen, the catalyst, what's going to ignite change, I'm going to have Martin ask uh, to speak to Marty privately. And that's what's going to ignite change, but now we've gotta get the, the reaction. And so ta training, tackling the immediate problem. The immediate problem with this catalyst is that Dot is not gonna wanna let anybody be alone with Marty. Dot is going to be like, no, you cannot speak to Marty alone. Anywhere she goes, I go. So I want to do this in a way. I want to have like this sort of like snappy dialogue back and forth, back and forth, where I want it to be like, Martin's going to ask to speak to Marty alone privately. And then Dot's going to be like, wherever she goes, I go. And he's going to be like, fine, but you know, to chat, but he's going to get interrupted. Marty's going to be like, and he's with us too. And he's like, okay, fine. Yeah. And he can come too. And Digby's going to like come, the little kid we saw in the last chapter. What about me, you know? And like, so I want to have like sort of this like ricochet situation happening here with a, with the people talking, everybody just kind of like, he's trying to have a moment alone with Marty and everybody's just trying to like dogpile in and be a part of it. We're gonna, at that, at that point, we're gonna have him be like, okay, no, like I'm putting my foot down. The kid's not coming. It's just you three, nobody else. And so that is gonna be sort of our training montage. We've got premise, catalyst and training. The hurdle of the chapter is what's not working out right away. So Martin in this situation has finally gotten Marty, Digby, and Dot pulled aside, just the three of them, and he's going to have a word. And so the hurdle here is Martin's gonna ask, again, he's gonna repeat himself, and rather than taking that seriously at face value, Marty's gonna say just one word. Martin's then gonna ask, what? Question mark. So you see how this is the hurdle? Like the conversation is not going at all how Martin wanted it to go. And so now the next one is the lesson. The lesson is what information was gained from the hurdle. It can be material, can be immaterial. In this chapter, new information gained from the hurdle. Martin's gonna then say to Marty, based on what he just learned about her personality, funny, we were looking for, or we were expecting a knight, not, a jester. Um, so that's our lesson. And then the denouncement, the new situation for the next chapter. This can be transitory or it can be a cliffhanger. And this is where Marty could say, uh, that's perfect, or because I was just on my way to get knighted. 
All right, that is it. That is the whole outline. And look, it took up half of a page. And this is a tiny book. This is probably another six by nine. But yeah, that is our outline. So this is everything we need to, to finish the next chart, which is actually drawing our paneling. And so we're gonna start our thumbnail sketches here before we transfer over to the, the digital screen. Editing Antonia here to take back over because it is time to lay out your template. Whether it's one you've downloaded or made yourself, all that matters is it is scaled correctly for the format you intend to share your comic in. The standard size of a webtoon is 800 pixel by 1280 pixel, but most creators use a longer canvas than that and then splice it later for uploading. I prefer to double my width from 800 pixel to 1600 pixel and then I max out the length as long as my canvas will allow me in my drawing software, which in my case is 20,000 pixel long. If I can't fit my whole chapter on that canvas, I will draw the rest of the chapter onto a second canvas. You could dive into your comic template with your chapter script in hand uh, and begin drawing your panel sequentially, but it's also helpful to do one more tiny step before drawing the fully fleshed out comic, and that is thumbnailing. I won't spend a long time on thumbnailing since this video is already very long. For me, I use an unruled 6x9 inch Rite Aid or CVS writing tablet, draw a line right down the middle, and start planning out the size and shape of my panels, the pictures in them with rough stick figure sketches, and the placement of my word balloons for the full chapter before jumping into Clip Studio. This way, if I have an aha moment toward the bottom about how to make something on the top or even in the middle look better, I don't have to undo a ton of work that came before the idea had reached my brain. It's up to you how you want to design your panel and word balloons. What's most important is that you give your art and your text plenty of space so that it doesn't get scrunched and difficult to decipher. If you are interested in learning more about types of panels and how to get good shot variation, I'll be making another video in the near future covering that topic and more. So make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as a point of reference, I personally draw an average of 14 to 20 panels per chapter and submit two chapters a month on a bi-weekly schedule. Webtoon Originals have anywhere from 35 to 60 panels per chapter and post weekly. As someone whose comic is not my full-time job, it's unrealistic to compete with those whose comics are. So be considerate of your unique obligations when setting expectations for yourself and your comic including leaving free time available to spend with friends and family or else invoke the wrath of burnout. When you are finished drawing your comic chapter, the last step is delivering or publishing it. For Webtoon creators, there are three parts to this step. Part one, creating a chapter thumbnail. Part two, splicing your chapter into Webtoon-sized assets. I recommend using Croppy and I will link it in the description. And part three, uploading the spliced assets to the Webtoon dashboard. If this is your very first chapter, then you will also need a series thumbnail, title, and summary. After that, it's just rinse and repeat until you reach the end of your story. I really hope this video was helpful to you, that you'll rewatch it each time you're ready for the next step in your comic making process, and if you have any questions, drop those in the comments. I always read and answer as many as possible. If you want more tips on how to make a webcomic, check out this video here.